The next guest study on chapter 7 about the estimates and sample size. This chapter we start on the information statistics. And chapter 8 is about hypothesis testing. So those two are the main major contents of the inferential statistics. In this section, we will um, use a sample proportion. I typically use a p hat represent a sample proportion. Is sample success rate. It's the best point estimate of the population proportion. Population proportion using P, capital letter P, representing the population success rate. So we can use a sample proportion to construct a confidence interval. So this is another major topic in this chapter, is constructing a sample uh, confidence interval to estimate the true value of the population proportion we learn how to uh, interpret such confidence intervals, interpreting the confidence intervals. And then also we're going to use uh, formula to find the sample size necessary to use to estimate the population proportion. There's the major topics we're going to cover. So the point estimate is a single value. A single numerical value used to approximate the population parameter. So per population parameter here, we're talking about population proportion, population mean mu. Those two are the major focus. Population, proportion. And the population mean. Okay, so the sample proportion p hat is the best point estimate of the population proportion. Okay, so we usually use p hat represent the p hat is representing the p. So the Pew Research Center conducted a survey of 1,007 but they also find that 85% of the no what Twitter is. So 85% of them know Twitter, 15% uh, of them do not know Twitter then. Does not know Twitter. Okay, so either no Twitter, do not know Twitter. So the best point is best point is made of P with p hat, in this case p hat, this is a sample, survey is a sample of 1007, so we have the sample proportion here, so 85% is what we call the sample proportion, so sample proportion is the best at point estimate of population proportion, so that's why we can say that p must be around 0.85, meaning if you um, generalized to the entire population will be 85% of the adults with no Twitter um, in the US. So the confidence interval is another method besides the point estimate. The confidence interval is, is a range values used to estimate the true value of population parameter. Confidence interval is sometimes abbreviated as CI. C I represent confidence interval. Takes first letter of the C, first letter of the of the interval I, then get C I. Now the confidence interval is a range of values to estimate the true value of population parameter, and this following graph shows you the relationship between the point estimate. This is point estimate. So point estimate give a single value. And then confidence interval give give us entire interval here. So we call this 
lower limit left bound is called a lower limit confidence lower limit the other one is upper limit on the right right hand upper limit so um the confidence interval have much better chance of capturing the population population parameter here because you have infinitely many values within the interval so confidence interval has better chance of finding the population perimeter okay. compared to the, the point estimate right? now the confidence level so that's the difference between the confidence interval and the confidence level Confidence level, which is basically the probability is one minus alpha. Alpha is what we call a failure rate. One minus alpha is success rate. So using usually expressed as the equivalent percentage value, that the confidence interval usually actually does contain the population perimeter, assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. So the confidence level is also called a degree of confidence. Most common values are 90% confidence level, 95% confidence level, and 99% confidence level. So 90% confidence level, alpha equal to 0 0.10. 95% confidence level, alpha equal to 0 0.05. 99% confidence um, level, um, alpha equal to 0 0.01. Again, they are complement. So if you sum up alpha and then confidence level, it becomes one, alpha plus confidence level it's equal to 100 percent okay. um, let's just show how to interpret this confidence interval let's say population proportion p greater than 0.828 less than 0.872 so basically it's saying we are 95 percent confidence we have 95% confidence that the interval from 0.828 to 0.872 actually does contain the true value of the population proportion p. Uh, another way of saying this is if you um, picking a sample of size 1007, contrast, co constructing the corresponding confidence interval, 95% of the of the time. 95% of them will actually contain the true value of the population population p. So this 95% also refer to success rate of the process um, being used to estimate the proportion. So the higher the rate, the better it is. So using confidence interval for hypothesis testing and a confidence interval could be used to test some claim made about the population proportion P. However, it only gives us an informal judgment based on the result. So in chapter eight, we're going to complete a new set of method to do the hypothesis testing. But the confidence interval only gives us an informal judgment um, about any claim or hypothesis. So now let's move on to critical values. The standard z-score could be used to distinguish between the sample statistics that are likely to occur and those that they are unlikely to occur. So for example, show the bell curve. Um, if alpha equal to 0.10, that means this is 90% confidence level. So right here, on the two tails, on both tails, 0.10, um, each tail will occupy alpha over two, alpha over two. Okay, alpha over two is equal 0 0.05. It's equal 0 0.05. One minus alpha, that's located in center, which is 90%. So that's 0.90. Okay. So on the two tail, there are those are the unlikely event. So 
So again, this is unlikely. On this tail is unlikely. And anything in between that's likely. Okay. Likely event. So this is how you associate in the alpha and the confidence level in a bell curve. So under certain conditions, sampling distribution of the sample proportion could be approximated by the normal distribution. So using normal distribution to approximate it, to approximate it, uh, whatever distribution presented. A z score associated with the sample proportion has a probability alpha over two. 40 in the right tail and also on the left tail. So the z-score separating in the right tail region is called denoted by z alpha over 2. So this is what we call the critical value or critical z-score. You can easily find it from the table E2, right? On the bottom right hand corner of the second page, and you'll be able to find the, the, those common critical values. So uh, this is likely to occur on the, the left tail, this is unlikely to occur. The events are unlikely to occur. On the right tail, similarly, it's unlikely to occur. Okay. So um, z-score is like critical z-score is used to separate those usual events from unusual events. Unusual events are unlikely to occur. So critical value is a single number on the borderline separating sample statistics likely to occur from those that are unlikely to occur. And the z alpha of two is a critical value with the property that separates area alpha of two in the right tail of the standard normal distribution. Again, one more time, if you draw this, one minus alpha in the middle, alpha of two on the right tail, and then alpha of two on the left tail. And the critical z score located on the right tail, z alpha of two. Now, confidence level 95%, middle, that also gives us usual event, usual events. And then unusual events occurring on the both tails, unusual. Events. The right tail and left tail. And if company level 95%, then everything in each tail will be 0 0.025, which is alpha, which is 5% by 2. That becomes 2.5%. 2.5% is 0 0.025. Okay. And those two are called critical values. We have a positive one, 1.96, negative one, negative 1.96. And you can easily find it from table E2. On the second page, bottom right hand corner. And this is a common critical values when there's 90% confidence, then alpha equals 0.10. Critical value is 1.645. That's 95% confidence. Then alpha equals 5%, which is 0 0.05. Critical value is 1.96. And confidence level equal 99%. Alpha equal 0 0.01. Critical value is 2.575. And data from the simple random sample are used to estimate population proportion. The margin error, or you can also call that maximum error allowed. 
maximum error allowed. This margin error we're using capital letter E is a maximum likely difference between the observed sample proportion p hat and true value of the population population p. Um, so margin error equal to maximum dif maximum likely difference between the p minus p hat. Okay. The margin error is also called the maximum error of the estimate quick find multiplied by the critical values and divided by standard deviation of sample proportions. Okay. Here P have represent a sample proportion called the sample success rate. Q hat is equal one minus P hat. We call this sample failure rate. M represent the sample size. C alpha over two, that's a critical value, positive one, positive critical value. Okay. So that's the formula we use to calculate the margin error. Right, so P population proportion is capital P. You can also say that population success rate P has sample proportion, so the sample success rate for that Twitter example will be knowing Twitter will be the success event, not knowing Twitter is a is a failure event. M represent number of sample size, the number of sample va sample values. E is margin error. C alpha of two, uh, critical value, critical z score. Right? Okay. Now the requirement to construct a confidence interval for estimated population proportion p. The sample must be a simple random sample to guarantee its random, randomly selected object. Condition for the binomial distribution are satisfied. Fixed number of trials. First condition: trials are independent. There are outcomes in two categories. We call this success or failure event. Probability of success or failure remain constant. Okay. That same condition as when we talk about a binomial probability distribution. So the third condition is at least five successes and five failures. Okay. So remember that when we constructing a sample, um, construct the confidence interval to estimate the population proportion p. Check the three conditions before you proceed. And this is a formula. Again, start with the margin error. You need to find the margin error first. And after that, we form a, the confidence interval. Right? Using p hat minus e, that's what we call the lower limit. And here, the, this is what we call the upper limit. That forms a, the confidence interval and eventually to contain the population proportion p in it. And there's a couple other ways of writing the confidence interval. You can write p hat plus minus margin error. You can also put in the interval notation, open parenthesis p hat minus e, comma p hat plus e, close parenthesis. And also running rules for confidence interval estimate Population proportion p, confidence level limits for population proportion p, we run in three digit, three significant digits. Okay. For example, like something like 0.235, all right? That's three significant digits. Okay. Our, our procedure for constructing the confidence interval for population proportion p, first of all, verify all the uh, require assumptions are satisfied. 
First one is a simple random sample. It's a simple random sample. Second one, the condition for binomial distribution is satisfied. And we use a normal distribution to approximate distribution of a sample in proportion. Also, third one is a this is successes, MP is number of successes. NQ is the number of failures. Number of successes and number of failures must be greater or equal to five. Okay, that's the third condition. Now after that we move on to step number two. We refer to table A2. Find a critical value Z alpha of two corresponds to the desired confidence level. Then the third step, evaluate the margin error using the formula critical z score times square root of p hat times q hat over sample size. Now once we know the margin error and then also the sample proportion, then we construct the confidence interval, put in the interval notation. And this is a typical inequality form. So we put it into inequality form or confidence of interval notation. Like p hat minus margin error, p hat plus margin error. Okay, they are equivalent. And run the result to three significant digits. Right now, now let's take a look at a concrete example. We know that the Pew Research Center pool of 1007. Random selected adults show that 85% of the respondents know what Twitter is. So knowing Twitter is a success event is what we call success. Do not know Twitter is a failure event. Okay. The sample result n equal to 1007 and p hat is 0.85 because 85 percent of them know twitter in this sample so we know that sample proportion or sample success rate it's 85 percent which is 0.85 now you need to find a margin error that corresponds with 95 percent confidence level so since we know 95 percent confidence level critical z score from table a2 is 1.96 Find a 95% confidence interval estimated population proportion P based on the result. Can we safely conclude that more than 75% of adults know what Twitter is? Assuming that you are a newspaper reporter, write a brief statement to accurately describe the result and includes all of the relevant information. And first of all, we check all the requirements. We know it's a simple random sample. So randomly selected, right? So Simple random sample checked. Fixed number of trials. We have 1007 trials. Trials are independent because they are randomly selected. And we have two outcomes per trial either uh, no Twitter or do not know Twitter. Probability remain constant. So we check the second one binomial probability distribution satisfied. The third condition is number of success and failure are both at least five. How do we know that? We do MP, n times p hat equal 1007 times 85 percent that's a number of success and then that should be approximately let's see what that is 1007 times 0.85 That turned out to be 856 approximately so we have 856 successes Number of failures, we do n times q hat, q hat is 1 minus p hat, so 85% success, then 15% failures, so it's n times 1 minus p hat, it's 1007 times 15%, let's see what that is. So now it'll be 151 failures, 856 successes. They both they they're both bigger than five. So we get so use the formula to find the margin error first. First of all, we know the p hat. P 
hat is 0.85, q hat is 0.15, no sample size, which is 1007. What else do we need? Critical value, critical z score equal to 1.96. And we can find a margin error equal to critical z score times square root of p hat times q hat over simple size. Okay, so that should be uh, 1.96 times 0.85 multiplied by 0.15 dividing by 1007. Then you definitely have to use the calculator to do this and run the result to three decimal places. 1.96 times square root of 0.85 times 0.15 Divide by 1007, it turned out to be 0 .0, 0 0.022. That's a margin error. Now, once you know the margin error, then we can construct a 95% confidence interval. So, all you have to do is plug in the p hat and the margin error. Um, so, p hat is 0.85. Margin error approximately equal 0 0.022. So now p hat minus margin error, that's lower limit. And upper limit will be p hat plus margin error. Okay, let's plug in the number 0 0.85 minus 0 0.022, less than p plus less than 0 0.0, 0 0.85. Adding 0 0.022. And if you do the calculation, it will be 0 0.828. The so low limit is 0 0.828. Upper limit is 0 0.872. Okay. Then the interpretation of this, based on the confidence interval obtained, part B. It does appear that more than 75% of the adults know what Twitter is because they both of them are bigger than 75%. So definitely 87.2%. Okay. For sure, that's 85% uh, 75% adults who know Twitter is. <clears throat> because of this, I'd like you to contain the true population proportion. And that number definitely is bigger than 0.75. 75% so we good. Now the statement summarizes the result. 85% of US adults know what Twitter is. That percentage is based on the Pew Research Center poll of 1007, randomly selected adults. Okay. In theory, in 95% of such polls, percentage should differ by no more than two. 2.2 percentage points in either direction from the percentage. 2.2 point is what we call the maximum likely difference between the sample proportion and population proportion. Okay, um, that will be found by interviewing all adults in the United States. And this is what a newspaper reporter will do. By understanding the, all these important terms, you'll be able to understand what they try to tell us here. Um, when analyzing the poll, consider the simple sample must be should be a simple random sample. Okay, the competence level should be provided. Usually it's 95%, that's industry convention. Then usually media report, neglect, neglect to identify that. The sample size should be provided. Should be provided by media, but not always. Except for relative rare case, the quality of poll results depends on the sampling method, the size of the sample. But the size of population is not, a, it's not an important factor. And basically, you can ignore the size of population. Usually, for the general population, the size of population is fairly large. 
Shu Manger is usually um, never follow the common misconception that poll results are unreliable if the sample size is small, percentage of population size. The population size usually is not a factor in determining the reliability of, of the poll. Now, suppose we want to collect the sample data in order to estimate some population proportion. The question is how many sample data do we need? How many, meaning you want to estimate the sample size. We could also do that. But before we could do that, let's derive the sample size formula. Determine the sample size, we start with the margin error formula. First of all, we, we square both sides equations. So E square equal to C R over 2 times square root of P hat times Q hat over sample size. Square both sides. And then we're going to get E square and distributed square for each one of this. So we get critical Z score. Critical Z out of 2 square times square and the square root cancel each other. And then P hat times Q hat over sample size. When you're going to solve the sample size, you're going to set up motion. So e square 1 equal to critical z score alpha. Critical z score square times p hat times q hat over sample size. Now we cross multiplying. Now sample e square times sample size equal to critical z score square times p hat times q hat. Eventually we divide both sides of the equation by e square. Then we get a margin error formula. So e square cancel sample size equal to critical z score square times p hat times q hat over margin error square. Okay. That's how we go from the, the margin error formula to the sample size formula. And all of these formulas summarizing in the formula sheet. And you can find all these formulas in the formula sheet. Sample size for estimating uh, pro proportion P. Um, sample size equal to critical z score squared times p hat times q hat over e square when the p hat is known, meaning when p hat is given, or you can calculate the p hat and use this formula. If the p hat is unknown, you use this formula critical z, critical z score squared times 0.25. If p hat is unknown, then p hat equal to 0.5, q hat equal to 0.5. That's why p hat times q hat becomes 0.25. That's why we are using 0.25 here. Okay, and then using p hat equals 0.5, q hat equals 0.5, we get um, this is like conservative estimate, um, which is better off. This is kind of conservative estimate because 0.25 is the it's the maximum value you can get when you multiply p hat times q hat and that gives us the, the biggest value among all of those sample size the bigger the sample size the better it is that's why this is a conservative estimate okay and when you compute the sample size n it's not when it's not a whole number you always run up to the next whole number Next larger poll number. So many companies are interested in knowing the percent of the dogs who buy clothing online. A lot of um, online retailers, how many adults must be surveying out to be 95% confidence that we know that critical z score is 1.96. Okay, but the sample percentage is in error by no more than three percentage point this tells us, us we have a margin error 
which is 3%. 3% 0.03. This is maximum error allowed, right? 3% maximum error allowed. Use a reason result from the Census Bureau, 66% of adults by clothing online. So this um, reason survey, so we, we know in PHAT, right? 66%, which is 0 0.066. 0 0.66 is PHAT, and also we know Q hat then. It's so 1 minus P hat, 1 minus 0 0.66 is 0 0.34. And this is for pi. Puppy is assuming that we have no prior information suggesting a possible value of proportion. And that means p hat equal 0.5, q hat equal 0.5 to get a conservative estimate. And let's work on part A. p hat as we just calculate 0.66, q hat is complement 0.34, alpha equal 0 0.05, critical z score is 1.96. Margin error equal to 3 percentage points, which is 3.03. So sample size equal to critical z score square times p hat times q hat over margin error square. Okay, so this is 1.96 square times 0.66 times 0.34 over 0.03 square. And again, let me get an exact value first. And we run it to the next whole number after that. And this is nine hundred fifty seven point eight three eight nine. So no matter what, what decimal you have, you always run up the next whole number. Remember, the better, the bigger the sample size, the better the result is. So the sample size needed is 958 online shoppers being surveyed. And so, to be 95% confident that our sample percentage is within three percentage point of the true population proportion p, we should obtain the sample simple random sample of 958 adults. And second one, I like 0 0.05, and we know p hat equal to q hat 0.5. When they are unknown, when p hat is unknown, here the sample proportion is unknown. So margin error should be equal to critical z score square times 0.25 over 0 0.03 square. And we have formula first. P hat times Q hat e square. Okay, so this is 1.96 square times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, that's 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.03 square. Okay, let's see what that is. And this turned out to be 1,067.111111. And again, we have to run it to next whole number, which is 1,068. So to be 95% confident that our sample percentage is within three percentage point of true population, true population proportion of all adults, we should obtain a simple random sample of 1,068. And finding the point has made a margin error from a confidence level. So lower limit, upper limit, that's p hat plus margin error. Adding lower limit is p hat minus margin error. And you're going to get, you end up with a 2p hat. Right. When you combine these two, margin error can cancel, so 2p hat over 2 
you get p hat. That's why p hat equal to that. If you do margin error, that's my upper confidence limit is p hat plus margin error minus open parentheses p hat minus margin error. We expand it, we get p hat plus margin error minus p hat plus margin error. Now we cancel p hat, we get twice of margin error. If you divide that by two, you get margin error. That's why margin error equals upper limit minus lower limit divided by two. Okay. That's all for this section.